What a great gift. And Jesus said, this shall be remembered. Because she gave him a resurrection before he even died. You can do the same. You can pray. Give the best you have for a young man named Glenn Beck. And thirdly, and I close, I'm going to walk back. There was another great woman, just like you, just like you. Thank you. She was not Jewish. She was Greek. She was like you and I, a Gentile. She was not supposed to be in the crowd. But she came. She followed Jesus on behalf of her daughter who had an unclean spirit. Didn't have no money. But God's son, Jesus Christ said, he had not seen that kind of faith in her as he had seen in the Israelites. And do you know what? When she got to Jesus, even the disciples told her she was not included. And when she spoke to Jesus in a begging voice, he ignored her. He would not say a word. And then when Jesus spoke, he said, should I take the bread from the table of the children and give it to a dog? She didn't get upset. She did not panic. She said, you're right, but even the dog is due crumbs. There's somebody here living on crumbs. I looked at my man, his hands. There are people come from Iraq and all around, from Afghanistan on different legs, but I think they can give a crumb. They can give all they had. She said, but feed the dog underneath the table. And I close. I want to thank Glenn Beck for giving a person of mine, a man, that don't deserve to be here. I quit school in the 10th grade, but God never let me stop. I have a bachelor degree. I have a PhD. And then I have a doctor of law because God would not let me stop. He fed me underneath the table. And I met a man, I met a man this morning. I sat down for breakfast, his name is Joe, Joe McNillan. And he told me how God blessed him so and all he wanted to do was to see all the children. He said he went to a town and took a, a company that had been bankrupt. He took that company and gave 300 and some people a job feeding a person with a dog appetite beneath the table. Thank you for letting me come and thank you for this reward that I do not honor I do not, I don't deserve it, that's what I'm saying. But I honor it to my dying day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. parent of both faith and charity. It's the light in a world that sometimes can be dark and a difficult place. Without hope, without that glimmer of faint light shining through even the bleakest of times, we die. Hope is our eternal flame. But for hope to be real, it must be based in truth and honor. Without it, hope is nothing more than an empty wish. Our history 
box chock full of brilliant men and women whose integrity and courage gave birth to this glorious republic. Men and women whose actions radiated hope throughout this entire land of ours. But where have they gone? What happened to truth? What happened to honor? What happened to the individuals who just do the right thing, the hard thing, even when no one is watching? We need leaders to give our children something to hope for, to hope in. We must restore, not transform those values, those principles, the freedom that defines who we are, who we have always been. America the beautiful, the land of the free, the home of the brave. The shining beacon, the city on the hill for the whole world to see. That is our truth. That is our hope. Ladies and gentlemen, here, here to present the badge of merit for hope, the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, Tony LaRusso. Good morning. Wow, what a view. <laughs> anyway, before I get to the award, I want to thank Glenn and his team for a couple of things. One, for the introduction to the organization, which is the Special Operators Warriors Foundation. Uh, did not really know about them until recently. An incredible organization, so pleased to get to know them and will forever support them, as you all are doing. Thank you. And I also want to thank Glenn and his team for this concept. I mean, it's invigorating to listen to what's been done so far and what's going to be finishing this program. My responsibility is to introduce this year's HOPE Award recipient. What does a HOPE Award represent? The essence is a commitment to honesty, integrity, and truth, and trust. And you, they exemplify this through their personal and professional lives. Success is hard-earned. An award winner will have confronted challenges, adversity, failure, refused to give in, and determined to influence the outcome no matter what, if, what he or she faces. These are the qualities that we often define as a hero. In reality, I think most of us will agree that real-life heroes are hard to find. In fact, to many, especially the young people, our heroes are a product of movies, TV, and fiction books. But we do have real-life heroes, and one of them is our Hope Award winner, Albert Pujols. Albert is best known for his baseball career. He is just finishing his 10th year in the major leagues, and over the 120 years of Major League Baseball, Albert's first 10 years are historic. This is not the place, it's not appropriate to list what he's done professionally as impressive as it is. In fact, our sport, we have our own awards to recognize excellence, and Albert has received some of them. But his baseball exploits are not the reason that he is the Hope Award recipient. Because what separates Albert is his total commitment to his life in and out of baseball, his commitment to his family, Deidre and their kids, his commitment to his faith, and also his tireless in and out of season commitment to community. If you're in the 
St. Louis area, you will see Albert on days off, evenings off, throughout the very tough six month season, tirelessly being involved with causes, especially their own Pujols Family Foundation. So, in a time when you're looking for a real life hero, the fact that the opening comments that were recorded, they said there's a search for an examples or examples of excellence. I want to introduce you to an example of excellence, our Hope Award winner this year, Albert Pujols. Thank you.